Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, I want to talk about India's space program. They have a national agency called ISRO, or ISRO, it's the Indian Space Research Organization. In recent years, that space agency has shown to be very competitive with other national programs, even at much lower budgets. Like, for comparison, NASA's monthly spending is probably in line with ISRO's annual spending. Uh, you know, they, they get less money than, uh, you know, Chinese or Russian space agency, and yet they're pretty uh, effective as an agency. Like, they were also working in the commercial market. Their PSLV launch vehicle uh, was doing pretty well, offering good prices. They've lost out a bit to SpaceX, but um, all the same, as a, a scientific agency, they were able to send a spacecraft to orbit Mars before China was able to get there. They have uh, the best camera in lunar orbit right now, and they're planning to launch humans in coming years, possibly as early as next year. Now, in terms of rocket design, they've got a lot of domestic hardware, and most of their rockets, all of their rockets, in fact, use large solid rocket motors. They've developed this technology on their own, and there's only like the US and Europe that are building solid rocket motors of similar size. Um, their main rocket engine they use uh, in terms of liquid fuel is the Vikas engine, which is an Indian-built version of the European Viking engine. That Viking engine debuted back on Ariane 1. So the Viking or Vikas uses UDMH and dinitrogen tetroxide with a third tank of water, which is needed to cool the gas generator exhaust so they can run the pumps without melting them. Uh, now, they've taken the Vikas engine and started out as a clone of the Viking, but they've managed to upgrade it, and the, the newer versions have a lot of different performance uh, improvements. And they also have versions which are adapted for uh, sea level use versus uh, high altitude you know, vacuum use. Uh, but they also have developed a completely domestic hydrogen oxygen uh, upper stage engine. Originally, back in the early 90s, they were just gonna buy the technology for hydrogen oxygen engines from Russia, but there were political problems and ultimately they were only able to buy the engines. So they then set out in 1994 to develop their own uh, engines. And yeah, now they've got the CE 7.5 and the CE 20. And both of these are uh, quite capable hydrogen oxygen engines. Now, this is all what the state of where we are now. But if we go back, India's program really started probably about 50 years ago. Um, in the mid-1970s, they launched their very first satellite. It was called uh, Ara Ara Riyabata. <laughs> it was basically like a, a cosmic, an, an X-ray astronomy experiment. It did experiments in solar physics. This is what it was designed for, but they didn't have their own launch vehicle. They did, however, have an agreement with the Soviet Union where Soviet Union would use uh, Indian ports and India, one of the benefits was that they got to launch rockets on or satellites on Soviet rockets. So in 1975, Ariya Bata, I, I can't, I don't know why I can't say that. I'm sorry. Uh, it launched on a Cosmos 3M rocket, a glorious success that lasted all of like five days before all power on the spacecraft was lost. But it was a small step. And obviously, they've become more successful since then. Very quickly, however, India set out to develop its own launch vehicles. It didn't want to be relying on the other countries. So their first vehicle that they developed was the SLV, the Satellite Launch Vehicle. Yes, I, I'm going to point out that almost all Indian launch vehicles basically end up in LV. They are very, very simple, similar naming. But yeah, the SLV was an all-solid four-stage vehicle that uh, it actually looks very similar to the US Scout, but I'm not sure there's any actual te technology between the two. Uh, so it was 17 tons, 22 meters high, and it could launch about 40 kilograms into low Earth orbit. The very first launch attempt from this uh, was in August of 1979, and it was going well up until the second stage, and then it went out of control and this spacecraft ended up in the Bay of Bengal. A year later, they went and fixed the problems. They managed to launch a uh, satellite, I believe called Rohini, into low Earth orbit. And that was their first successful domestically launched satellite. And it's worth noting, by the way, that Abdul Kalam, who was one of the lead scientists behind this program, 
he would ultimately go on to be president of India, which is a largely ceremonial position, but all the same, he was apparently very popular in this role. Um, SLV, it was a very simple vehicle. Obviously, it used solid rocket motors all the way. It had a pre-programmed open-loop guidance trajectory, so it didn't have any way to respond to underperformance or overperformance of the thing. So the final orbit was uh, rough, to say the least, but yeah, it was a big step for them. Now, 40 kilograms wasn't a lot, so their next step forward was the ASLV, the Augmented Satellite Launch Vehicle. And this basically took the same rocket and they took the first stage and strapped two of them on either side of the core. So the vehicle would lift up on these two boosters first and then those would be shed and the core would light and that would in theory carry it into orbit. However, it didn't turn out to be very successful. They had a lot, they had, first two launches were failures. They only really had a proper success by the end of the program in 1994. Part of the problem was it was a very long and thin rocket and that meant that they had stability issues. And when they were performing the stage separation early on, this was very low in the atmosphere. They were still inside the troposphere. So they had a lot of aerodynamic forces on it and they're doing this lateral staging. And that turned out to be a bad design for them ultimately. The program ended because they uh, had started developing a much bigger launch vehicle, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. And the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle would actually get its first launch in 1993. So by the time ASLV showed that it was successful, it was already being outclassed by a much better rocket. So India's vehicle, the PSLV, it's their third generation. It's about 40 feet, 44 meters tall, 320 tons. Or, or the, there's a lot of variation in that. It could be as low as 230 tons. There's a lot of different variations. There's the PSLV G, G plus, XL, QL, DA, and CA. And those are the ones that I know of. So in theory, depending upon the vari variant they use, it gets about 3.8 tons into low Earth orbit, possibly uh, 1.3 tons into geostationary transfer orbit. But the P is for polar, for polar orbits. It would only get about 1.8 tons into polar orbit because you know you lose a bit of performance. But um, the main thing is this has been their sort of mainstay launcher. They've launched it like 53 times, uh, uh, some of them successfully with a few failures. The first stage of this is another big solid rocket motor. It's the S135, and I think that's because there's 135 tons of propellant in it. Um, but around this, there are up to six strap-on boosters. And these boosters are practically copies of the boosters that were on the SLV. So there is some sort of uh, you know evolution to them. Although I think in terms of size, they're close. They might, I think they use different, uh, different propellant. But the second stage is a liquid-fueled stage with the, with the Vicus 4 engine. That's their upper stage, upper atmosphere version. So again, that's liquid fuel, UDMH, nitrogen tetroxide. Um, the third stage is another solid rocket motor with thrust vectoring, uh, vectoring nozzle. And the fourth stage is a small like engine with pressure fed uh, hypergolic engines. So one thing to note is on that first stage, when you look at it, there's the strap on motors, but even if you take those away, there's these two small cylindrical devices on the side. And many people think these are small solid rocket motors, but they're actually the steering system for the first stage. And this is kind of cool because this is a big solid rocket motor. It doesn't have a nozzle that can thrust vector. What they do is they use secondary injection thrust vector control. That's where they have a ring of injector ports inside or near the throat of the rocket. And they inject in here a very powerful oxidizer, strontium perchlorate. And that increases the reaction rate on one side of the nozzle and therefore causes the rocket to steer. So that's how they get their yaw and pitch control. At the bottom of these cylindrical things, there are also little uh, vernier thrusters which are used to provide roll control for the vehicle. So yeah, this is the PSLV. It's been used by Chandrayaan-1. It's been used by their Mars Orbiter mission. 
Uh, it's been a commercial launch vehicle. At one point, it held the record for the most satellites on a single launch, which I'm going to say is kind of a stupid number, it's, and uh, which is why you shouldn't be worried that SpaceX has managed to since beat that number. So the next step on India's rocket revolution is the GSLV, the geostationary launch vehicle. And this is designed to put payloads into geostationary orbit. To do that, you need more Delta V. And to get this, they have uh, a third stage which uses hydrogen and oxygen. But below that, you have a first and second stage, which at the core look pretty much identical to the PSLV. You've got the liquid propellant second stage from the PSLV, and the first stage is the S-135 solid rocket motor. But instead of arranging more solid rocket motors around that, there are four bolted-on liquid-fueled engines. And these have their own propellant tanks, they have thrust vectoring nozzles, and this is strange because usually you have solid rocket motors bolted onto a liquid core and those then get she you know, shed off partway through the launch. This is the reverse, except that those external liquid-fueled engines don't get ditched partway through the launch because they burn longer than the solid core. So yeah, these provide extra thrust, they carry it up through the, the first stage of the launch. They have uh, vectoring nozzles on those Vicus engines, so they are able to provide the control for that first stage. Unfortunately, it's not optimal design because that big booster in the core, once that burns out, they're carrying the, you know, the weight of that empty, dead stage. Anyway, the real difference is that third stage. The third stage is hydrogen and oxygen, and a lot of this technology was developed entirely domestically in India. Now, for the Mark I of the GSLV, they used Russian-built engines. They used the KVD-1M, which had its roots in the N1 program. It was later pitched as an upper stage for the Proton rocket, but they were buying these engines in and putting them on to pro propel the third stage of the, the uh, GSLV. It only launched six times, and it wasn't a great, didn't have a great performance record. There were two failures, there were two partial failures and two actual successes, although one of the partial failures was ultimately able to get from its uh, non-optimal orbit into its final orbit and complete its mission. So ISRO like to call that a success. I'm not ISRO. Now, the Mark II marked the switch from the Russian-built hydrogen engine to the domestically built engine, which is the CE 7.5. This was a bit more suited to be an upper stage engine ultimately. And uh, yeah, they've had eight launches with this, only two failures. And so that's the GSLV Mark II. Now, there's now the GSLV Mark III, and that is completely unrelated to the Mark I and II GSLV. So for the GSLV Mark III, they developed an even larger S200 rocket motor. I think 200 is roughly the amount of 200 tons of propellant. This is, you know, these boosters are 25 meters tall, 3.2 meters in diameter. The, you know, with the casing, the total mass is something like 236 tons. So for these large boosters, they also developed a moving nozzle so that they don't have the, again, the liquid injection thrust vectoring. This puts them like in the same league as boosters that are used by Ariane Space and the US. So this is a real big solid motor. So a pair of these flank the core stage, which is another hypergolic fueled uh, end stage propelled by a pair of Vicus engines, which are now uprated. I believe they provide more thrust than the, the engines that Europe built. So the core stage doesn't actually light on the ground. The, the S200s light and they carry it through the first couple of minutes of flight. Uh, just before separation, about 10 seconds, those core engines light up booster shed and that core then starts carrying the the rest of the rocket up. Now the upper stage on this is a much larger hydrogen oxygen stage. They now have the CE20 engine which is again a domestically developed engine. This large GSLV Mark III will put 10 tons into low earth orbit and about 4 tons into geostationary transfer orbit. So the GSLV th Mark III was used to launch the Chandrayaan-2 lunar mission and it's actually also planned to launch Gangayan, which is, or sorry, Gaganyan. I get that wrong. It's their uh, crew vehicle, which could launch as early as next year with you know, Indian astronauts, uh, if everything goes according to plan. 
There are also plans to improve the GSLV Mark III by replacing the core with a new semi-cryogenic design. That would be burning kerosene and liquid oxygen. And this would make it a much cleaner rocket, although it still has those big solid rocket motors. So the engine would be called the SCE-200 and it is develop in development. SCE stands for semi-cryogenic e engine. And it's another Indian developed design that's a copy it's believed to be a copy of a Ukrainian RD-810, but that should improve performance on that first stage and that will then also allow them to have a larger third stage and better overall performance to orbit. So there you go, those are the launch vehicles developed and launched by India's Space Research Organization. They uh, have, I believe, three rockets currently active. The GSLV Mark II and Mark III are still operating in parallel and the PSLV is uh, obviously still very much the bread and butter of their launch capability. They have plans for future rockets. They, there is actually talk for like reusable re-entry vehicles and possibly reusable core boosters at some point in their future. But you know, everybody's talking about that right now. I think India should be proud of what it's built and the capabilities that they can have demonstrated on their budget, which is not that big. And the fact that they are very likely gonna be the fourth nation to launch their own astronauts using their own, uh, own rocket should be something they're very proud of. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.